Hello, hello, beautiful world, and welcome back. Today's guest is Nina Senichor. I have some Serbian vibes in the studio. Hey. I'm so happy to see you. You too, and um, thank you for having me. I, as I told you before, when somebody from Serbia reaches out to like do anything, I'm most of the times I say yes, especially if it's like somebody as um, you know as, as smart as successful as you are. So first of all, welcome to LA. I'm um, very you. happy you're here. And um, <laughs> can we say we're recording this in LA? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Because, oh, sorry. I forgot about this part, actually. Yes, okay. we are here I was like, LA. oh, we don't know that. Uh, yeah, we are in LA, um, yeah. which is pretty cool for two Serbians. Yeah, I'm super, super excited to have this conversation with you. You know, everyone told me, like I have a lot of friends in Serbia. You're in LA, oh my God, you have to reach out to Nina Senichar. <laughs> you know, you, you have to meet her. And today I'm here. And that was actually four years ago when I was wow. doing like these stunt things um, with, with some people here. They told me I have to meet you. And you see, after four years now, I have the opportunity to sit down and chat with you. It took you four years? To okay, there was COVID <laughs> and yeah, um, yeah. a lot of private things as well. You know? Same, same. <laughs> yeah, but that's how we grew Going. And I, I believe that the timing is right, right now. Absolutely. And we just found out that we live not even like a minute by foot from each other, which is unbelievable that for must LA. Be destiny, huh? So yeah, for sure we're going to hang out all the time. I'm very happy you're here. Do you have a dog? I don't have a dog. I have a daughter that I walk all the time. Okay. <laughs> dog or daughter. Okay. So we can take... You have a dog? No. Okay. I don't own a dog or a daughter or... Uh, well, <laughs> you know, who knows? But who knows, uh, yeah. I had a dog when I was younger and once she passed away, I said... And I had a horse and once he passed away, I said, I'll never own an animal again because it's just too much of a heartbreak. So I yeah. uh, don't have a dog and I don't plan on having another dog ever again. But why do you think that... Okay, now we're Serbians, okay? Why do you think that every American has like a dog is that the thing that they feel lonely here in this big black hole and this is an expression from Kevin you know Kevin told uh -huh. me that he warned me that we are actually living in a big black hole uh, well <laughs> yeah I mean LA is a very weird hard city to live in uh, it can be very lonely you don't really have that like day to day just walk among amongst a bunch of people thing like for example New York or anywhere in Europe so I think for us Europeans it's even harder because you know I, I don't like spending my whole time my whole day in the car driving from point A to point B like mm -hmm. I like to actually walk I'm probably the only person who walks everywhere in LA and I also ride a bicycle I can tell I mean yeah. the way you look it's uh, just amazing it's um it's a it's, Serbian beauty for sure um <laughs> no bicycle is, is a big thing for me and I'm probably like you know people like the other day I had a woman yelled at me my husband she was like it's not my fault you can't afford a car I'm like mm, I don't think it's about affording a car it's like about actually liking to bike <laughs> people in LA are weird you'll you just arrived you'll have a lot of time to figure it out I've been Already disappointed a lot, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, but th I think this is just L.A. You have to toughen up somehow. Absolutely. Once you find your way and your people, that's what they told me here, yes. then you're going to be fine. But it, it's been an interesting journey yeah. and nothing can break me. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> but uh, you just mentioned your husband and I have to ask you, like, they still don't know, but your husband is, I mean, they, my, my, my community, but your husband is Jay Ellis and he's a very famous and successful actor here. Mm -hmm. How is it for you as a Serbian to be married with an American successful actor? I mean, not a lot of people, not people don't really know a lot about like our love story or anything like that just because I like to keep that part of my life very private. I don't ever talk about him or my private life unless I really, really have to. Um, and so, and I kind of like it that way, but uh, I never imagined that I would be married to an American man. That's for sure. That's I always why thought, I'm bringing this up because yeah. we're Serbians. Like, yeah, yeah. I always thought it's gonna be um, yeah. uh, either a Serbian who kind of who maybe lived abroad for a long time, or you know, I lived in Italy for ten years, so maybe Italian. I never, ever, ever thought I was gonna marry an, an American man, but you know, things happen. Surprises happen in life. You can yeah. you definitely you can plan everything and. Um, Obviously, like, you know, you can't generalize. Like, not all American men are the same. Not all Italian men are the same. Not everybody in L.A. is the same. So I never thought that, but it happened. So. But how important are other people's opinion to you? Not really, to be honest. I've been yeah. in this in this industry for way too long to, to actually care about, like, 
um, what people who I don't know think and say. Um, I do care that if I do a project, if I, you know, if I have a TV show or a movie that people, I do care what people think about it just because I'm interested in what audience thinks. But um, in terms of my personal life, I couldn't care less. What I like that. Thinks. You yeah. just know who you are and what you want and you just go after it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I like to keep my 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 you know private life private because again it's nobody's business what I do in my private life and um but you know people are I haven't had like any bad bad experiences when I used to live in Italy it was much worse I had um paparazzi like literally camping in front of my apartment for years wow uh, my grandfather at one point was my boyfriend because they took pictures of me and my grandfather who came to see my uh, graduation And next thing I know, he's like my new boyfriend. Like, I had a lot of things that you're like, what? But, um, you know, you just take it with a, I don't know, I just laugh at it. Yeah, I yeah. like that you just shake it off and that's it. Yeah, you just it. shake it off. It's nothing, again, in a big picture, it's nothing that important. And um, we come from Serbia, like we come from a, from a war-torn country. Mm-hmm. Um, and once you live for three months under bombs falling, like you do understand that if there's something in newspapers that's not true, it's whatever. Like, yeah. What was the most, um, like, how do you say that? Say Sorry. in Serbian. <laughs> yeah. Šta te najviše pogodilo kad si pročitala nešto in the media about yourself? Okay. Um, what was this one one thing that hurt you the most? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, here we're going. Sorry, because you know, all these languages, I have Serbian and then English and Swiss German and High German and sometimes it's confusing. Trust but me. Now I'm, you got me in this position yeah. where I was like just, you know. It happens to me all the time, don't worry. Yeah. I have like those moments where like my brain can't think of a word in any language. I'm yeah. just like, I just know more or less what I want to say, but like not, none of the words come up. That happens yes. when you speak a lot of languages yeah. all the time. The beauty of speaking a lot of languages. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, what hurt me the most? I mean, yeah. nothing, nothing really. Like, unless it's like I had a pretty good relationship with media and like um, um, and that kind of side of my job for a long time because I always kept private. So it's not like I was never like hurt. Um, it's more I, I, again. I I take it really like very lightly. Okay. Yeah. I think that this is the professional mindset in this industry as well. Yeah. And I also yeah. don't. There's a lot of people who. Um, build their careers based on like gossip and their private life and that's totally fine but that's just not who I am and so do you think that they're more successful in this industry just because of the fact that they're sharing a lot more about their private lives uh, I mean I still kind of believe that like a little bit of mystery is better um, but we do live in 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 a, in a time where you know everybody knows everything about everybody just because you can post your whole life on Instagram if you want and I don't know. It's a it's a choice. It's a personal choice. Maybe they they are more successful, but they're paying a high price in sharing that much of their private life because yeah. if something bad happens, like let's say you know a breakup or whatever, I think it hurts even more having already having to go through that pain personally. Plus, like you know, everybody knowing about it. Yeah, it's like with GLO. I have to say, I'm her biggest fan. And she's she went through a lot of shit, so to say. But she's still, you know, on on her feet, and she always believed in the in, in, in her love of her life. And today she's back with the guy from 20 years ago. And how cool is that? That she never gave up, you know. And everyone was always well, well informed about every relationship. But it toughened her up. For sure. I mean, yeah. we're talking about like the high doesn't get higher than that in terms of like how many people know who you are and what you're doing. Yeah, but it's um, crazy. Yeah, it's it's hard. I mean, yeah, it's again, we live in this time where I remember when I started this job, like even when I was doing like, um, I don't know, like a, like a appearances, like uh, events, you know, you, you take a couple of photos with professional photographers and then you're there, you're connecting with people. Nobody had cell phones. I started a long time ago. <laughs> What was that? Yeah, there was like, you know, the, the, people had cell phones, yeah. but they didn't have like iPhones and stuff that they can like capture every moment. Yeah. And, and, and You were at the BlackBerry um, <laughs> I miss I miss BlackBerry yeah, so I love BlackBerry. Much. I love BlackBerry. Yeah. I, no, I started when there wasn't even just BlackBerry. I started when there was like Nokia and you can play the snake. The snake. Oh, <laughs> that's your generation. Okay. <laughs> Guys, she's not that old at all. No. Um, well, I also started early, but yeah, uh, yeah. And that was like a more free time let's no say. selfies yeah no that s- oh was my the god time. yes that was the time no selfies. wow yeah 
Yeah. So you actually ex experienced also, also this change of generations where we were more into social media, exposing ourselves on these platforms, yeah. selling our bodies <laughs> and souls. Yeah. And um, I mean, that's real. It is. In some cases. I mean, I, yeah. I'm very, very happy that when I was, you know, especially when I was working in Italy in my, like, early, early 20s, that there was no Instagram because who knows what I would post like you know yeah. who knows maybe I would be like you know I don't know so I'm actually very very happy about that but you know when social media started especially Instagram mm -hmm. I ignored it for like the first four or five years I completely ignored it I like I opened my profile so somebody else doesn't take it but I wasn't posting anything and why were you holding yourself back what what was the reason? Because I, I was one of those stupid people who thought it was a flop and nobody will ever actually take it seriously. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And then like... Same with TikTok. Uh, I, I still mm. don't. I can't do TikTok. I'm sorry. No. I'm too old for that. I can't do TikTok. But um, I do understand the power of social media for sure. Um, but I still wish that one day we'll all wake up and all the social media will be gone. I really wish that happens one day, especially like for yeah. my daughter. Yeah. Uh, it's hard. It's hard to raise kids, you know, with social media. And I, I'm from generation where I still very much remember, you know, somebody calling at your house and being like, "Hey, my name is this. Can I please speak to Nina?" Or you know, whatever. First, they have to go I'm through your parents. knocking on your door. Yeah, or like yeah, stuff like that. And Our I think first date, he's coming and knocking on your door right? to pick you up, and not like, "Hey, I'm outside." That takes courage, like that. <laughs> yeah. You know, to knock on my dad's door, that takes courage. Like, I love that. Yeah, and so, never had that before, but I know it from the movies. It looks yeah, nice. Yeah, that was really cool. You and had so, that. I mean, yeah, I have, you know, I remember that, like, I didn't have, I can't even remember last, when I got a cell phone, but, you know, in my whole elementary school, I guess, um, people, my friends would call me at home in order to talk to me, and so, yeah, that was pretty cool. Is that something that you want to teach your daughter? I don't know, like I'm very uh, on a fence because you cannot teach them about what's happening right now in the world. You can't live in the past. So, you know, it's like, do you give um, do you give kids iPads, right? It's like some people believe that kids shouldn't watch any iPad until they really have to, un un until they're adults, but then all the schools are slowly starting to use only iPads. So yeah. if you take the iPad from the kid and then they come to school and they have no idea what they're doing, like you're also like, you're not doing them a favor. So there, there has to be like a fine, Moderation. like a balance between, yeah. yeah. What values do you like to teach your daughter when it comes to the Serbian culture? Um, and I what mean, are the American values? Oh, that's actually an interesting question. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think like values are the same everywhere. For me, it's just like, I'm very simple in that way. Um, obviously, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm Serbian. Um, I did spend 10 years in Italy, so I did take a lot of, um, Italian things too. I speak with my mm -hmm. hands a lot. I'm like putting them in between my legs. So Me I'm too. Not, like, Is that an print. Italian thing? That's a very Italian thing. But that yeah. also means that you're outgoing and you have a body language. True, right? but that's also like a very Italian thing to be like doing this with hands and you know all the time. Oh my god, uh, I just so. can't stand still. This is who I am. Like, who well, Switzerland is close to Italy, and you know you live there for a long time. Yeah. There's a lot of Italians in Switzerland, yeah. so I'm sure. Um, yeah, but um, oh, well, I, not 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 very much. To be, we're already. more like. <laughs> yeah, I think that the Swiss people, and I I know I can say that on camera, they're more like calm, mm -hmm. you know, and very calculated. Mm -hmm. They would never bring something up that would damage their reputation, and that is true. I know it's true because I'm just different. I talk about everything because my soul wants to speak about certain things in order to uplift other people. Yeah. I cool. see that as my personal purpose. Okay. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's all. If, I mean, you know, yeah. you are. Uh, Italian too, right? Talk about yeah, it. Yeah, Just open your soul and bring it out there. <laughs> you know, and we, you know, we Serbians, at least my generation, especially because of, you know, the wars and all that stuff. Like when I first moved to Italy, I was 17. And um, when I started working in television, um, you know, people kept telling me, like, you have to smile more. You have such a strong face features. And that wasn't popular back then. Like, now it's very now popular. It is. Yeah. But back then, that wasn't popular at all. Like, high cheekbones, like, kind of jawline, whatever. That wasn't popular when I started. So people kept telling me, like, especially in Italy, like, you have to smile more and just 
come off as more soft and like this. And I'm like, seriously, no, that's not just who, like, I can't do that unless you actually make me smile. I'm not gonna smile. Like, But you're an actress. Well, <laughs> you should be but, smiling. You know, but that was like when I was just starting and it was like, yeah, well, yeah. And yeah. they were like, you know, but yeah, you have to be like, tra la 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 la, whatever. And I'm like, mm mm, nah, that's just not who I am. But, um, it did soften me up a lot. It really did soften me up in a good way. Like, um, you could, because, you know, we from Serbia, we come off as very kind of standoffish, mm -hmm. which I like because it takes a while to get to know us. So we have this like kind of wall, uh, like a defense mechanism in front of us. And whoever I meet from Serbia, if they don't know that I'm Serbian too, I see it. It's like we come off as like, you know, not at a first, you know, just like a little bit watch out. And then if you actually if you're actually like get to know them, they will give you everything. You yeah. know, we are like so generous, so generous and like so funny and so warm yeah. and soft, but it just doesn't come off right away. Um, and I guess that was bothering them in Italy that I wasn't as soft on the first, you know, when you first meet me. Um, Is that also self-protection? For sure. But that's also a very Serbian thing. I mean, you know, we did. We are a tough, like t t tough people. Like we've been through a lot. Not just my generation, your generation, but also obviously like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Mm -hmm. And so I think we're all very, um, we were all in a survival mode for a long time. And we, when you're in survival mode, especially in the 90s, you know, Mm -hmm. You can, uh, you know, you can expect me that, you know, in 1999 they bombed, they bombed us, and then in 2004 when I moved to Italy, you can't expect me to be like, ah, life is so amazing, like you guys are all so sweet. That's just not, you know, what um, what happens. But I did soften up a lot, and I'm very thankful for for Italians for that. So, going back to the values, the questions you the question you asked me, I, I actually gr forgot the question. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> good, but it's uh, an important uh, question. Yeah, to, about, to me, it's yeah. just about like if you do good, good will come back, and if you do bad, bad will come back. That's like my biggest like. Kinda, so you believe in karma? I believe in karma, or call it whatever you want. But yes, I do believe in karma, and um, I do believe that. In some way, there's like this whole, our life is like a big, like a, like a kind of circle with a lot of ups and downs. And then kind of everything kind of comes back to you sooner or later, bad and good. And that's more or less what I teach my daughter too. Obviously, she's three years old, so I can't really explain to her that concept. But just yeah. like, you know, that that's the value that I kind of uh, follow. Okay, so you believe actually also in the law of attraction? What you put out that you also receive sometimes i mean you attract what you are at the end uh yeah i believe in like practical stuff i believe in taking like practical concrete steps towards your goal um i'm not very much into like oh if i think about something for a long time and i attract it with my brain that will happen i'm more like okay what's the first step what's the second step what's the third step i didn't make it okay how can i go around and make it like in another way but still get to that same goal mm -hmm. so I'm, i'm more practical than just like the you're idea. acting and that's the thing like the main part is acting on some something in order to get it yes 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 absolutely. and you have a vision i guess otherwise yeah yeah nothing yeah yeah i like that <laughs> really i do what is your definition of god of god Talking about that now yeah Whew, that's a that's a question I wasn't expecting. Um, <laughs> okay, oh, okay, now um, I want to know what you really think. Or what I don't you really have a definition of God, I guess. I never really thought about that. Um, uh, I'm very spiritual. That's why I probably I'm bringing this up. Okay. Um, yeah. I, again, I believe in like a balance and mm -hmm. some some higher power that makes whatever you do good come back to you in a different way. And same thing for, for if you do bad. Uh, but I don't know if I could, I, I, I wouldn't put like a certain definition and a name to it, um, if that explains. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just did a show yeah. about, uh, in Serbia, where I play priest's wife. So the whole show is very connected to church. In Serbia, we can have, priests can have wives, not mm -hmm. in, because we're I, I didn't know that. Orthodox religion, right? So yeah, in, Orthodox, there, yes. in Orthodox religion, priests can have wives in, obviously, Catholic they can't so I play priest's wife um and so I was very like um and I play my role she's not she has no idea what's happening she doesn't know anything about religion or church or which makes the whole situation very funny but um I did learn a lot about you know different things and different customs and um and I do celebrate you know 
all the Christmases and all the Easter's. And Slavas. Yes, uh, Slavas, yes. And yes, Slavas, yes. guys. My Slava is coming up now in uh, December 19th. Nice. St. Nicholas, yes. Yeah, that's like a holy day. Yes. That's something you're always going to keep in your family, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. My, yeah. my husband, when he first learned about Slava, he was like, I really like that because we explained it to him like... Thanksgiving. <laughs> well, for, for, for him, what was really interesting is that um, there's a day in a year that everybody knows it's like the day of the, you know, Slava of your family. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to send invites. You don't have to send like RSVP, like nothing. People just show up at your house on that day. And he's like, wow, that's amazing. Like, you don't really like, you don't really have to organize an event per se. They just know that that's the day of your family. So effortless. Right? I'm <laughs> yes. like, it's not that effortless because women usually cook for like days bef before that. Uh, you do the sarma and everything? No, no, I don't. Uh, I don't. Do your, does your husband ever see you in the kitchen? Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Okay. But um, I'm not, I, I've never made sarma before. I made stuffed peppers before. Okay, that's more yeah. Greek as well, right? Well, Punya na paprika, that's like a very Serbian. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, with a Serbian twist. Ali ima yu Grzisto, right? The yeah, Greek yeah. people also. We have a lot of yeah. um, similar dishes yeah. with, with Greeks, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, how do you actually feed your child uh, here in America with all these GMO products? <laughs> I mean, it's the truth, yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm like, my grandma used to say, you can just... You eat a little bit of everything and you'll be fine. And that's more mm -hmm. or less. There's nothing I don't eat. There's nothing she doesn't eat. Um, I don't have like any dietary dis restrictions, even though that's very popular, especially in LA. Yeah. yeah. Um, farmer's market and air Yeah, wine. no, I just love yeah. when I go with my girlfriends yeah. for dinner and then the waiters, you know, waiter comes to, to take an order and then one is like, I'm, I can't eat onion. I can eat meat. I can, and this poor waiter is like standing there for Just ten run minutes, away. and he's like, literally, I, I can see he's thinking like, why did you come to a restaurant then? But he can't say that, so he's like, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. okay. And then I'm like, I eat everything, um, which is very Serbian. Like I feel like yeah. you know we kind of eat everything, so. A little bit of everything is fine. I'm yeah. the complicated one. You are? I'm the vegan one. Ooh, okay, well, that's you're in a oh. perfect city for that. But it's almost a decade. I'm wow. good. Yeah, so that's amazing. imagine me explaining my Serbian family that I'm vegan. Like, Like, what's wow. wrong with you? Yeah. Wow, wow, uh, wow. Yeah. Well, my character in the show that I, that I just did, um, she's vegan. Mm -hmm. So... There's a lot of jokes about that too, but the actor who the, the who's playing my husband in real life is actually vegan. So I remember even on set there was like a lot of you know, it was hard. Like it's really hard for people who come to Serbia and they're vegan to yeah. um, to find the right. I mean, I'm sure you you saw that. Yeah, yeah. I, I went to all the restaurants yeah. and we know all the same restaurants. And you know, at the beginning I'd be like. I'm vegan. Stadtjeto, like what is that? I'm like, no animal products. Oh, vegetarian. I'm like, no animal products. <laughs> and then they ask you like ten times. Wait, do you eat eggs? No. No. Oh, yeah. Do you eat um, cheese? No. no. Um, <laughs> so I have a strategy, a strategy actually. What I'm saying now is, I'm allergic to fish, meat, uh, dairy, and eggs. And then they just bring you what, like a lettuce. Yeah, and they're like, oh, really? You're allergic? I'm like, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's the only way to make sure that they're not going to try something to do in the kitchen, you know? Yeah. And no, at the end, I, I can eat everything everywhere. I like to go to Madeira and mm -hmm. have like a lot of um, like salads or like chickpea options mm -hmm. with tofu sometimes. Like, yeah. There's so many places. Even French ha has the best spaghetti in the world for vegans. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Uh, well, very surprised about these places. That's good. I mean, no. For sure, I mean, it's getting better and better, yeah. like it's not, but you know, you know Serbians, we eat a lot of meat. My dad always mm -hmm. said when, when we would sit at the table and like, I don't know, my mom would make something that has no meat or fish, he would be like, uh, um, this is not, where's the meat? Where's the meat? <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm pretty much the same, I, I need, I eat meat, so. Yeah. I'm it, not very LA. But, but the uh, way you look, like. Do you count your calories? I have to ask you. I, by the way. I eat a lot. Like, guys, she looks like a supermodel, but I can tell that you're working in front of a camera and you're taking care of yourself. Yeah, mm. Brinem <gasps> Osebi. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you we heard can about, talk it, about huh? that. Yeah. 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 Um, that's uh, that's the name of my. I don't know how to call it organization. Yeah, it's uh, an organization. I take care of myself. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I do take care of myself. I do work out a lot, uh, but it's more mentally than physically. Like, um, mm -hmm. 
uh, I really like to work out. I was working out right before I came here, and I was like sweaty at the gym when you said, "Oh, we we're gonna start an hour oh, earlier." Oh yeah. shoot! Okay, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have my workout later. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. But um, I think that's high priority. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's like work. Like when you go out to work on yourself, it's also going to the gym and work on yourself mentally, physically. Yeah, for me it's very important. I uh, yeah. again, but I work out more to have like um, to be to be well mentally than to actually like change any appearance in my body because I've been working on my whole life. I um, mm-hmm. I was a professional horseback rider until I was like 17, 18, and so I was so used to training every day uh, mm-hmm. for a long time and so once I stopped I kind of had to transfer that energy into something else and yeah I um, I mean I probably go into gym every day since I was 17 yeah wow yeah. good for you <laughs> I'll show yeah. you the best places in LA LA is a heaven for working out if and you for vegans and for vegans oh my god yeah for <laughs> and sure. for this industry actually yeah it has changed me a lot you know now I'm thinking even more outside the box when it comes to creating myself. Mm-hmm. It like stretched my mind and my awareness. That's a, and you've only been here for a short time. So Seven that's weeks. That's, yeah, that's crazy. It's amazing. Yeah, it is. It yeah. can either break you or it can build you. It's up to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah How you yeah. got up on your feet. You remember what we shared outside? I didn't want to t- to talk to her before <laughs> we started. She was very mysterious. Yeah, I'm like, I want to know you now. I want to get to know you in the podcast. But what you just said outside, it it defines a person how you get up on your feet. Yes, I think mm-hmm. it's uh, life is uh, a lot of ups and downs. And I really admire and I'm very interested in seeing how people get up once they're done. And I, I find those stories most inspirational. And um, I always tend to learn a lot from them. So then my question would be combining these all like all this information together. Was that a way for you to get up on your feet by creating this organization? Yabrinem Osebi? Yeah, for sure. That was yeah. uh, um, that was definitely my way of um, Maybe, we, maybe you have to explain it why you actually created it. Well, yeah. uh, the, the the organization I, I take care of myself or Yabrina yeah, Mosebi was um, the main goal is to raise awareness, mostly in Serbia, but I also do do it in Italy um, about cervical cancer mm-hmm. and about the importance of, you know, going to to checkups often and at least you know once once twice a year depending on your age and just kind of. Which in the States is very, people know about it, people mm-hmm. know about HPV vaccines, like it's not that big of a deal. But where we're, we're from, um, it's a very, very crazy, statistically, um, a big number of women die and get sick from cervical cancer, which, mm-hmm. just to give you like um, an example, I think in Serbia, the death rate is like 7% of cervical cancer. And like in Finland, it's 002 and oh, the only difference yeah. is the amount of um, checkups women do, right? That means that we need to raise awareness about it. And I, I have checked it. I have to be honest. You well, see, you now got that me you there. met me, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna push you to do it for sure. Because <laughs> I met, and you know, I had a very personal loss. That's why I started the whole the whole thing. Um, and it's crazy how that's one of the easiest um, tumors to 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 see and to. Um, to get rid of mm-hmm. but at the same time if you don't treat it if you don't go to the checkups even if you're young it can create once you once you have any symptoms it can already be too late it can like how can you tell that you all. have like the symptoms sorry about uh, interrupting but uh well the, the, symptoms. Si- the symptoms are bleeding and um there's a lot of different symptoms you can your whole body can kind of swell up and but again most of the times when you already experience symptoms that tumor can be growing inside of you for 12 14 years and by that time it's too late um but like literally too late so um that's why it's so important for women to to go do the checkups and you know where we come from a lot of women are either young and don't have time for that or I have the time but I never had actually the thought yeah which is crazy mm-hmm. but you know um, I know a lot of girls you know in Serbia they're like oh we don't have money I'm like you have money to do manicure and to have your hair done and to go <laughs> to the most expensi- expensive restaurants yeah. to eat yeah yeah. but you don't have time to, to maybe save your life like you know yeah. that's priority uh, yeah that's why we had uh, one of the slogans of the campaign that I just recently did with um, United Nations uh, office in Serbia who were my partners in this last campaign I did. One of the slogans was, there are no excuses. 
because of that. Like, if you have money to go do a manicure, the checkup is exactly the same amount of money as to do a manicure in Serbia. So there's no excuse. Like, you can't tell me, oh, I can't afford it. Um, mm -hmm. And then there's another group of women who maybe, you know, have their, have their kids and then they kind of stop going to see um, their doctor because, you know, after pregnancy, after maybe second or third pregnancy, they just don't think they need to go back to see their their doctor. Uh, and so that's when you can, you know, you can develop this tumor and then by the time you actually have symptoms, it can mm -hmm. be too late. So the, the statistics in Serbia are very, very bad and we don't have, we're one of the only uh, countries in Europe that doesn't have like a mandatory screening for cervical cancer. Um, and so that's just, those are the things that my organization kind of tries to um, to work on and to raise awareness about it. Right. And then the next step will be the HPV vaccines for 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 girls, um, but also for women um, who already had, um, who already had sexual experiences because the most uh, effective is uh, when girls still didn't have sexual experience. That's mm -hmm. like the, the, the most effective time to get HPV vaccine and that can save you from getting HPV and developing a tumor later on. But not a lot of people know that actually women can take it no matter what age they are. It's just a little bit less effective, but it's still effective mm -hmm. and it's still very helpful. Um, and that's in Serbia, very good to know. Yeah, yeah, in Serbia, that's not covered by um, health insurance. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's something that I just, that I'm very passionate about. And so that's what the organization is about. Are you working on that, that the insurance also pays for this extra cost if you make a checkup? So yeah. you can, you can, you know, in Serbia, it's a little bit different than in the States in the way that, um, I don't know how it is in Switzerland, but we have a public health, right? So there's yeah. no private, uh, private health insurance like it is here. So technically you can get your checkup for free, but the whole system you have to go through is very annoying. I mean, you've probably been to a Ser Serbian hospital. It's not, yeah, yeah. it's not the yeah. best. That's the thing. When you have the money, everything is fine. Everything is fine. <laughs> you can be so like a king in Serbia if you yeah, have money. And I feel yeah. so sorry about the 90% who are struggling, but other people are coming with the best cars and the most expensive bags and everything. We love nice th things, but it's not appropriate to wear it everywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's certain boundaries. I mean the same the same thing in the, as in LA. I don't know if you mm -hmm. notice, I'm sure you notice, but you know, you go in a coffee shop and pay eight dollars for your cappuccino and then you walk out and there's a homeless person laying on the street who hasn't yeah. eaten in probably a week. I and know. you just spend eight dollars on I a cappuccino, know. like it's insane. Um, I'm sending out love when I see it because on a, on, a, on another podcast in German, um, I was uh, podcasting a mindset coach and um, also a motivational speaker. Mm -hmm. And what he shared was whenever he sees something, he's blowing out love, like, and you send it to this person, and it makes me feel so much better. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, you can whatever you can do. The you know the rule here is that in LA is you don't really talk to them or try to help. But them. Why? I always greet them. Good morning. Good uh, afternoon. Well, because a lot of They're them people. have, a, yes, but yeah. a lot of them have like um, mental issues. That's why they end up being homeless in the first place. Not all of them. Some people actually choose or some people obviously lose their housing because of a big health bill or, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure people from here can explain that to you way more, way better than I do, but... You know, it's just um, you never know what you're gonna, how, what kind of reaction you're gonna get back, and so it can be dangerous, it can be scary, but it's very, very sad. And in Serbia, it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. We don't have homeless people like that, thank God, but we do have a lot of people who struggle, uh, especially people outside of big cities. Yeah, that maybe we don't see often. Yeah, but I like that about us that we still have like these two worlds combined, because yeah. you know where you're coming from. Yeah. And you also know what uh, what really matters in life is at the end, like being healthy, having a family, and you don't need much to be happy. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's simplicity. Yeah, my parents always used to say, if 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 it can be solved with money, it's not a problem, and that's true for me. Like real problems or something or something else, um, you know, health, uh, family, um, and stuff like that. So, and that, I think that, that that's the same no matter where you come from. What was the biggest lesson your parents taught you? I don't think they actually like 
to me, it's more about giving an example to a child than actually telling them something. Like to me, actions are way more powerful than words in everything. And so, you know, both of my parents are very successful doctors uh, in their fields. And so just, uh, just watching them, how they work tirelessly from, you know, night shifts to 20 hour days and you know, in Serb- here it sounds fancy, somebody's a doctor, and here people are very rich when they're doctors. Where we come from, they're not yeah. at all. Uh, they're I like know. one of the lowest paid in the... In which the, is incredible. Which is insane. Yeah. Um, they literally devote their life to, you know, helping others, and they're not paid even like remotely enough for that. And so just watching them, you know, struggle and, and still being very passionate about their job, you know, just that taught me a lot. But I do think that every parent who... Every person who had kids in the 90s in Serbia deserves like a, I don't know, a gold medal for bravery or a statue. Like, you know, going Mm -hmm. through what those parents, what those people have gone through having kids in the 90s uh, with all that uncertainty, with bombs falling, it's, you know, it's insane. I I can't even imagine now having a kid, I can't even imagine how you know what would I do if that that was to happen so Mm -hmm. um just you know small things just seeing them going through all those hardships made me respect them and you know just learn a lot about like life itself yeah back then you lived in um, Novi Sad right yes I'm from Novi Sad which is the second largest city in Serbia yeah um and uh, yeah that's my hometown that's where my home is I see that you definitely have your roots inside your heart. Yes, absolutely. But I also do, uh, I'm a, you know, um, I have uh, a lot of Italian influence. I lived in Milan for 10 years, so Milan is my second home. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, it's a mix. It's it's a blessing and a curse because you feel like at home in a lot of places, but at the same time, none of it is like 100% that because, you know, yeah. you kind of go all over the place. So... I do feel the most comfortable, probably on an airplane. <laughs> but you live here in LA on the other side of the world. Yeah. Do you, yeah. Uh, would you consider this to be your home now, your home base? I'm not sure if I will ever feel at home in LA. Uh, After 10 honest. years? Yeah, I know. But yeah, I uh, I do travel a lot. I work a lot back in Italy and Serbia. And so... And, you know, being an actress, a lot of projects, even American projects, are now being filmed in in Europe. Yeah. So I'm always kind of secretly hoping I'll get another project that, that will take me for six months to Prague or Budapest or whatever, like just somewhere in Europe. Mm-hmm. So I do have that um, uh, n- need to spend more time in Europe uh uh every, every year. But um, I guess LA is my home physically, yeah. So you have your child here, or is, is she traveling with you all the time? She depends, but she, yeah, she travels with me a lot. She speaks Serbian. She, uh, I, I like that. Yeah, she spent, yeah. she spent a lot of last year in Serbia. And um, mm-hmm. I, when, I, when I was doing a show this summer in Serbia, she was there. So, um, yeah, but, you know, what? She, yeah. she was born here for sure. Uh, so she speaks English and Serbian yes. fluently. yes. That's nice. Yeah. Maybe I can teach her some German. It's always useful to know more For languages. Sure. I know only <laughs> bad words in German, so I can't help her with that. Okay, give me one word. No, I can't. Come on. How bad is it? <laughs> your like, audience, your you? audience in Switzerland is going to be like, who is this rude person? Um, who is... Uh, I had a friend from Berlin when I was young, when I was like, a, you know, maybe like 12, 13. And she she was Serbian, but her family, she was born in German and um, mm. in Germany. And so she taught me all those bad words. Okay, it's always, you start with the bad words. Yes. And the last thing you learn is, how do you say I love you in that language? Well, okay, I why know, I know that, that too. I didn't see. Ich liebe dich. Oh, with an accent. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> But your English is very good. Oh, thank you. Uh, um, was it ever a problem to get like a, a role in a movie with your, um, like, n- not very Balkan accent? It's really good. You don't even have an accent. I have a I, bigger accent than you do. No, you do. You have this like a sweet kind of Swiss accent, actually. You don't have a Serbian accent. You have a I Swiss don't. accent in English. You It's think really so? funny, yeah. Is it too Swiss? Uh, I have to change that. No, I think it's super cute. You have like a... Um, I think your accent is really cute. Um, I like accents. Uh, I don't like the fact that my accent puts me in a certain category when it comes to roles, um, which is crazy that, um, you know, if you have an a- any kind of accent, they, they put you in a box right away. And so most of my life I've been playing a Russian prostitute, 
or you know, oh wow, yeah, or like <laughs> it's Ita- surprising, yeah, or like Italian daughter of a mafia guy, like stuff like that. Just because I have a certain accent, yeah. which is insane, because in LA you cannot not hear an accent. Everybody's from somewhere. Yeah, New York, the diversity. Same. I like that. Yeah, and so in order for me to play, let's say, a doctor, um, I have to go to Serbia and play a doctor, or I can. It's really hard for me to get any kind of like a normal role here because of my accent. Mm-hmm. For some reason, if you have an accent, you can't be a normal person. How do you actually um, handle the situation when you're turned down by someone in this industry? Because I know it's a, it's a better field out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I mean, I'm so used to it. I get no's every day. I mean, it's just yeah. a part of my job. Like, you know, you probably do 100 auditions in order to get a couple of jobs. Like, it's... It's a lot of no's. You just don't take it personally. I mean, there's, there, it's such a business. It's called show business. It's not called, you know, it's not called show fun. It's a business. And so, you know, I am very aware of how this business works. I, um, I've been here long enough to know, you know, what, what I can do when I can do. And so I try to find more creative ways again. And so if I want to be a lead of my show... I know that I can maybe do it in Serbia or maybe in Italy, but here it's really hard because of my accent. And so I kind of express myself creatively in Europe in projects that I really like. And here I kind of get what I can. It's not the best because, you know, it's fun to play those kinds of roles when you're in your 20s. But then, you know, I'm 37 and it's like, you know, I want to play a normal, I want to play a detective in the U.S. I want to play a doctor in the U.S., but I can't. I can't even audition for those things just because of my accent. Do you think that it's going to change from now on? That people are more for diversity and, you know... Just people, are from the, people are for diversity and that's amazing. Uh, I'm all about diversity. Um, and it's ama- I have a lot of colleagues of mine who, you know, um, have more opportunities now because of this whole movement. And thank God that's finally started happening. It's been way too long. Mm-hmm. But there's not, um, there's not a lot of... Um, a lot of roles for people who come from Eastern Europe, that's for sure. Um, it's very, 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 very small pond, and so that's really hard because we look white, obviously, yeah. but we're not what Americans think of white people, right? Because like we we have an accent, it, it's very hard. It's very hard to put us in any category because we again uh, have our own history, our you know. Um, obviously an accent and so we don't really fall into any category right now and it's really hard Um, but hopefully that will change before I'm 80 so I can still do some of that I Uh, see how much you really want to be a detective on a show (laughs) and uh, I would love to see you oh well thank you I I love playing uh, if you ask me what I would like to do next I would really like to play that was actually my next question oh really but thank you I'm a little bit of a witch I kind of know do that come on just just uh, do your show. <laughs> do your show. I love that. Welcome to my podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you have this star energy. That's oh. what I really love about you. I love powerful and beautiful women Thank who you. are like just shining, you know, but not on the, on the outside. It's coming from the inside. And I can feel that in our bubble that we're created now. Well, thank you. I really you have this that. presence. And that's what I really love about you. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate you saying that. That means a lot to me, obviously. I, um, uh, to answer my question. <laughs> yeah, please answer your question. <laughs> uh, um, I would probably, if you ask me like now, just out of, like I would like to, to be on like um, on an American TV show where I can play again something like something. I like drama. Mm-hmm. I prefer drama over comedy. And so, you know, like a serious role, like again, a detective or even like a bad guy, but not like a Russian bad guy, you know, like a... Yeah. What do you want? Like, for some, for, no, for some, bad guy. No, 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 no. For some reason, <laughs> Russians and Serbian, we can only be bad, bad, bad guys, yeah. uh, which is crazy. As but you said, the energy at the beginning. Yeah. You see what they told you in in Italy. I'm listening yeah. to every word. You should be a bit more smiley. Yeah, for sure. No, yeah, that doesn't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> that That's work why me. you want to be the bad girl. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's um, come, it just comes naturally. To yeah, me. and I, you know, doing yeah. a lot of physical. I like workouts and I like stunts too a lot. You told me you were yeah. doing stunts here. Yeah, I want to yeah. hear more about that. Okay, we're um, going to talk about that. Yeah, maybe, walking your daughter, not your dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we can uh, we can do some stunt training together here. I, I yeah, really I like stunts. I can connect you with all my people. Oh, amazing. You know, I just arrived to LA, but with all my previous relationships, I'm trying to connect the new people with my old people. That you is know? Really and it really cool. works. 
I, you know, my thing on social media is hello world. Okay. That means that I'm connected with the whole world, and I, I see that. that as a purpose. But I would love to connect you with the stunt yeah. crew here. In I would love that. <laughs> I would love that. Uh, I'm actually trying. I'm actually thinking yeah. of starting next year to start doing this like a salon mm-hmm. for um, people in this industry, and I, by that I mean podcasts, acting, like you know, people cool. like in LA who come from where we come from from that side of the world which I call like Central Europe more than Eastern Europe like Balkans you know you, uh, uh, okay but don't you think that Switzerland is more Central Europe <laughs> but it's okay <laughs> I just want to find a way to cater- I just want to find a way to like define Bal- Bal- Balkans mm-hmm. Balkan Peninsula as something that's not necessarily considered as Eastern Europe just yeah. because here Eastern Europe has a very negative connotation yeah. and I'm not gonna get into that, but you know, East South Europe does that well, work? <laughs> east, well, but we're not necessarily like that Easter because there's a lot more East than where we're from, right? Yeah. Um, and people from Balkans are very specific, uh, you know, Bulgarians, Greeks. Um, mm-hmm. It's a there's a lot of history there, and so I feel like we deserve our own category. And maybe um, uh, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll try to. What I want to do is try to like kind of organize like a salon of people from that part of the world Mm -hmm. just like you know once a month kind of dinner or something we can all kind of like not network but just like get to know each other and 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 support our community um i I, think that'd be nice i had this thought when i arrived oh really because i know a lot of serbians here and i'm like why are they not hanging out together we're weird weird people mira what can i tell you i saw that you know in (laughs) switzerland we support each other. Yeah. But I'm telling you, the Albanians support each other a lot more than the Serbians do. Serbians don't support each other. And that's that's very yeah. sad thing. My Especially best friend, she's Albanian. Okay. And she supports me more than a- any other girl. Yeah, in that's, Switzerland, that's, that's you know? sad. Uh, Serbian women especially. There's like a competitions or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's really hard to, to have like a group of actually people who support you. Um, which is really important in this industry, obviously. So let's change that. Wow, I love that idea and I hope that I'm still going to be here. Maybe I can contribute something to yeah, these dinner dates that, that you're going to organize. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, I'm just blown away by you. I really oh. mean it. It's rare to find um, good people here in LA, as you know. It's hard. It's There, there are a lot, but it's just because of the way this city is structured. Yeah. It's really hard to find any people and then obviously create your own. And another... Mm, I just kicked the microphone. <laughs> another really hard thing about LA is that it's a constant... People constantly come and go, right? Especially mm-hmm. during COVID. Like, it takes a while to create... But your, that's what you're doing. You come and go and I you know, come back I and know. you go. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, it's literally that. So, yeah. and there's a lot of people who are obviously actors. So, they go away, do their projects. And maybe they're gone for six months. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, it's hard to create, like, a community of, like... There's not really that, like, think of, like, hey, what you doing? Let's grab a coffee. Because you're like, oh, but I'm in Venice. Like, I'm, like, an hour away from you right now. So, no, I can't just, you know... There's no yeah. spontaneity. Look, at, You have to, like... Um, organize everything schedule ahead and for somebody who's from europe and who's used to like jumping on my bike and being like hey where you guys at i'm gonna stop by Mm -hmm. it's 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 much different and so um it takes more effort but it's possible there are some good people here what's your advice on um you know on la and the whole uh, situation that we just talked about for actresses and for artists you know like what do you think is the right thing to do once you're here in this city of the fallen angels <laughs> now you know that uh, uh, yesterday i googled what is a fallen angel and this is actually an angel who is um expelled from heaven okay and then in my perspective perspective now i saw that Okay, now I see the fallen angels. Um, so many people disappointed me, but we are the real angels. <laughs> in heaven. <laughs> in heaven. Obviously. <laughs> does, does that mean that they're not here in LA? Because I feel that now that I changed my mindset, I'm like, I'm only attracting good people, honest yeah. people. I'm, I attracted this studio here with all these amazing people. I attracted you. Something has changed. It's all about, I mean, it's all about... Mm -hmm. I tell that to all my girlfriends, friends in general. Like, it's not about other people. It's about you. So you have to change. Whatever you want to change in your life, Mm -hmm. you have to change yourself. Nobody else can do it for you. You have to either decide to, you know, attract good people or, like, I don't know, have, like, a lot of girlfriends who are super single and, like, they can, you know, they can't find somebody who's right for them. And I'm like, it's not about 
the other people it's about you figuring out what you like with yourself mm -hmm. and then once you have yourself figured out and your situation figured out then the right person will come and so um that's definitely true uh, that is definitely true but i forgot what you asked me before that how to survive la oh, that yeah. was actually the question yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, because my it. previous uh -huh. episode is actually how to survive oh LA. really yeah because um, i had a lot of cancellation pro problems in the studio you know oh, okay. i don't know what you're talking about oh my god uh, you know and um, then someone didn't show up last <laughs> last uh, week and then oh i felt god. so shitty i was hurt and i recorded an episode about that situation oh no oh my goodness but that was a misunderstanding i didn't cancelled guys let's it just was be clear her. it was now a misunderstanding it, is secret. <laughs> it was misunderstanding right but thank god you didn't show up you know why because i was able to open up in front of the camera and oh. just talk about my my feelings i would never do that i would never record a podcast talking about how well vulnerable how do you say that word give it give it to me verletzlich vulnerable oh vel, 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 vulnerability vulnerable. vulnerable this is the only word i cannot pronounce here vulnerable is a very hard word yes vulnerable <laughs> Vulnerable. <laughs> vulnerable. Okay, anyways, I was hurt and I decided to just open up about the realness that's coming from my heart in this fake city because it's, it's not about you. Don't get me wrong. It's about everything what happened in the last seven weeks. Yeah, LA is hard. It's hard. It's, um, yeah. Um, but my advice, well, if I had known what I know now about LA... 10 years ago when I moved here. That's actually one of the last questions here, but oh, thank you. I don't need you. this anymore. <laughs> I didn't even look at what was. I told you I'm a witch. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes, I love uh, your podcast. That's the road to success that, by it. Nina. That's it for today. <laughs> Instead um, of Mira. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not no, trying to hide. I love yeah. you for what you are. Just <laughs> keep shining and uh, do your thing. <laughs> no, it's just like it's very connected to the advice because... But it's you like, see, we think alike. Yeah, for sure. And that's that's actually meaningful to me now. That I, I don't have to do this when I have a partner who's actually listening to my questions. Yeah. And you bring it up intuitive, intuitively. I, intuitively, in, yeah. 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 Um, well, so because the reason why I said that, because that, that's like a part of my advice. Basically, oh, this is going to sound bad. But um, okay, so for people who are coming from Europe, because mm -hmm. I assume a lot of your audience is European yeah. for now, and then it will grow now in this beautiful here. big market. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but uh, for you know, especially for people who are from like maybe my industry, um, if I had known ten years ago what's going to happen with the market in general, I would have probably never come to LA. Maybe I would have come for like a couple of you know months to do like a um, acting course or something because mm -hmm. there's a lot of really good acting schools here. But uh, apart from that. Now, now that everything is being filmed, not a lot of projects are being filmed in LA. Uh, and so you don't really have to be here. Everything is on self-tapes anyway. So you get jobs mostly via self-tapes, mm -hmm. especially after COVID. And there's a lot of projects filming in London, in Rome, in Belgrade, in Budapest, Prague, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and so I don't think it's very necessary to be here because you do sacrifice a lot to be in LA in terms of your st life, you know, style of your life in terms of being so far away from your family and friends and just completely changing your life not to say that it costs a lot of money obviously to live here yeah it's like switzerland it's, it's insane. crazy yeah and yeah. so yeah. um to me it's just i don't think right now i think 10 years ago when i moved here that was the right move to do because everything was happening here mm -hmm. but now yes some castings are happening but that's all virtual and so it's almost better to be in europe because you can book a job and fly for an hour to Budapest or wherever you need to go. Whereas here, you're like 15 mm -hmm. hours away, right? Mm -hmm. um, so if I was up and coming actor who really wants to come to LA because we all dream about Hollywood since we were yeah. born, because that's what that's a story they keep telling us that Hollywood is this heaven yeah. <laughs> for actors. Uh, I would probably think twice and be like, hey, why don't I do like a really cool movie in Europe that's going to end up in Cannes? And then when I come here, somebody's actually going to acknowledge that because, you know, nobody's waiting with open arms here for you to come. And people yeah. kind of think that, oh, I'm going to land in L.A. and then the whole world is going to open up. Nothing is going to happen. Let me be 100 percent honest with you. Like <laughs> nobody's waiting here for you. And it's not like. It's not like it was like 15, 10 years ago when you would go to Starbucks and some agent would see, huh, that's a very pretty girl. Let me put her in new Hunger Games. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. That like happened that. to a lot of uh, like Natalie Portman, I guess. That doesn't work like that anymore. That's just yeah. not how it works. And so yeah. um, 
especially for people from Europe, it's kind of weird. Uh, and so I would, you know, my honest, honest advice is to stay where you are. No, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, focus more on European market and like do pro and do Hollywood projects that film in Europe because there's so many of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then obviously, if you really want to come to LA, uh, find a right, really put an effort to find a right group of people, your support system and your friends, people mm-hmm. who actually support you for real. Because uh, that takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. It's much harder in LA for sure. Yeah, I love what you just shared with us. Thank you so much. No, of course. I mean, it's not a great, it doesn't sound like a great advice, but well, I no, would do that honest, for myself. But yeah. you know how it works now. I mean, yeah. I believe that for the European people or for the European market, it sounds so interesting when they hear like, you know, she's from LA, she does this and that yeah. because they sell the American dream in yeah. a very big way. Yeah. And that has that 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 does something to these people. It it really does something like with the perception of of a thing. Yeah, I mean, I was one of them. I yeah. always, you know, since I started this job, I always dreamt of coming to Hollywood. So yeah. you know, the first opportunity because Nina, I had, she made it in Serbia. Everyone would be like, she made it. She lives in Hollywood. She's yeah. living the American dream. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we, I mean that sounds so big. I remember my mom, she would always call me to the living room when we had like these talk shows in Serbia. Sine, like daughter, you know she lives in America and <laughs> then you know if you, she can do it, you can do it. Yeah. And I'm like now that I know all these people personally, I'm like, oh this is actually how my mom had the perception of a person just because of some couple of pieces that were out there yeah. but real life is so different it is it's so like this what we do like yeah. we talk about uh, specific things and yeah. you, you show emotions and open up so people can understand the good side and the bad side yeah absolutely and yeah. again now it seems like after this conversation that LA is a horrible place to be no LA it's not amazing. that's I why mean, we're still here <laughs> yeah LA is pretty pretty good uh, yeah. it's just in, in you know for, for real stuff like yeah. in my case for, for the career I would work for sure more if I was based in Europe, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's why I keep trying. I go, you know, I go back to Europe almost once a month, which is insane. Yeah. For your body, for your, you know, jet lag. Like, it's just, it's just not, it's not good. And so would I wish that I can get a big job in, in, in LA and just live here and work and that would be amazing? Yeah, but I don't think that's very realistic right now, just because of how this industry is right now. And it's sad, but we also have to be real. Like, it's not funny personal. Uh, we just don't really fall into any category right now. And so, um, and I do think that, you know, Europe has a lot of really amazing projects. And again, you can use the fact that there's so many Hollywood movies filming in Europe. Yeah, Um, I know a couple of American producers in Serbia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Belgrade is a big, is a big uh, new market for, for, for Hollywood. So that's amazing. I did a lot. I did like three American films in Belgrade. So imagine like sacrifice everything, came to LA. (laughs) That's left a- left a big career in Italy too, like crazy. Like that's like a whole other part of my life that I yeah. left. Uh, all my friends, everything that I built in ten years, came here and then ended up doing a movie back in Belgrade. <laughs> but do you see how it works? So you had to be in this place here on the other side of the world in order to get the recognition recognition there yeah. there in Europe. Yeah. Like yeah. how is that connected? It's it's like it's confusing. It's confusing, but yeah. you know you just go with the flow. It's how it is. Um, I'm sure, obviously, that. I'm not regretting being in LA for sure. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I have a beautiful family and um, and I love being in the city. And you know, let's not forget, you'll see it's it's pretty amazing. What it's December eighth and yeah. it's sunny outside and we can go for a hike yeah, and we can go I to the beach that. and you know, and every day is like that. Uh, once you get kind of used to that, that's what keeps you in LA because then you're like, oh wow, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, and we but, don't have the seasons as you also shared outside. That yeah. Time just flies. Time just flies. And it scares sure. me. Yeah. yeah. We don't have the season changes. We only have one season. <laughs> yeah. 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 You it's crazy. But, that, you know, yeah. you get used to that. And, um, yeah. So, you know, there are good things and bad things. But you f- you figure out what's the best for you. But, um, and also I think it comes with age. Like, you want to be able to, in case something bad happens with your family or with your friends back home, you want to be, like, one hour away by, by plane. You don't want to mm-hmm. be 16 hours away or 15, whatever. Uh, depending where you live but um, that's also hard you know it's, it's really far yeah but yeah. you still do it every month I do it very often yeah sometimes I fly back to Europe for one day and come back you do yeah, that for what yeah. like a meeting for a meeting for audition um, for job yeah I like that 
Really? Yeah. I, mean, I don't see myself living in one uh, in one yeah. place forever. Yeah. I lived in Germany and in Russia. Um, and I would always travel back and forth between Zurich and the place that yeah. I lived in Germany. And I need that. I, I, it, when I lived in S Switzerland the last two years now before COVID, uh, no, it was during COVID, I would always go to Serbia. Nothing yeah. can stop me. I mean, yeah. yeah, but Zurich, Belgrade is like an hour flight. It's, I know. You can do literally one yeah. every morning, you can go back and forth. But what um, I needed for myself was the Serbian way of thinking. Mm. Be a little bit laid back and go out for coffee. Meet people. You go, because we don't have to make an appointment a, a month before. Yeah. It's like just knocking on door, right? Yeah. And in Switzerland, it's like, oh, I'm not available then, but let's do uh, like in three weeks from now. That's how it is in LA. So yeah. that's good. You already have it. <laughs> I have it. Yeah. 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 I'm still trying to find the, the right thing for me and the right way to go, you know, but I'm very optimistic. Yeah. Well, now that you yeah. met me, now you're good. <laughs> oh, hey. thank you, God. Thank you, universe. <laughs> yeah. I'm joking. No, I mean it. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank um, you. I think you're an amazing woman. So, I so really you, I'm super happy we uh, uh, we connected and um, Instagram mm. is amazing. You see, in uh, you, hey, come on! You told me it took you like five years to be on Instagram, but then <laughs> you know, all it, all it took is was one DM, and here I am. So one DM, really and cool. because we're both from Serbia, and yeah, if you were, we're from both... Serbia, I would have done it. You see, that's the thing. It is, but yeah, yeah, and we had to find each other on the other side of the planet. So we can sit down and talk. Yeah. Because in Serbia, you would probably turn me down because there are a lot of people asking you for interviews yeah. and podcasts. Yeah, true, very true. And uh, this is, you see, uh, opportunities are everywhere. We're everywhere. in LA. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you so, so much Thank for opening you. up today, for your time, for your beauty, for your energy. I wish you truly only the best and the best. And I hope that you're going to create the circle of Serbian people here in LA where we can properly connect, help each other to grow. And um, yeah, only with the best intention for each other push in the right direction to go and to grow yeah no thank you and um i'm very happy you're here and i think that i hope you you know you're gonna be this is gonna be a big success here too and you're gonna you know make your business even bigger and um thank you yeah i'll be i'll you know I, i'll help how however i can thank you very very much wow thank you Wow, that was an unexpected, beautiful episode. And I'm so happy that she didn't show up last year, uh, last week, but she showed up today. <laughs> and it's even better than I expected. So don't forget to send me your honest feedback on this episode. And don't forget to subscribe and to like and to share it on your Instagram story. Bye, world. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.